Welcome back. A Glasgow man who has overcome a severe stutter to get his dream job as a teacher has been recognised with a special award for his services to education. Adam Black works at Shawlands Primary School in the city's south side, despite being told that his condition meant that such a career was impossible. He's received a British Citizen Award for his work and for years of campaigning to raise awareness about stammering. Claire McNeil went to meet him. There was a moment playing football where the coach asked me my name and I knew I could not say Adam. And rather than go through the whole pain and agony of stumbling and stammering and chest freezing on my name, I just thought it was easier to call myself John. So for the period of nine or ten weeks that coach was there, he referred to me as John. And it just was the most degrading and ridiculing and embarrassing thing in the world, actually becoming somebody else because, you know, you're afraid to be who you are. Because of his stammer, Adam Black struggled to interact socially throughout his childhood and felt he didn't have a voice. He always dreamed of being a teacher, but was told that a career which involved so much speaking was out of his reach. Going into secondary school and meeting the careers advisor and saying I wanted to become a teacher, it was sort of poo-pooed. Sort of. I wasn't laughed at by them, but I could tell they thought it was an idiotic thing to say. So it really damaged my confidence. I was quite upset about that. Um, so I chose a course at university which involved no talking at all. It was a sports coaching course, but it was all practical. Although his stutter dented his confidence early in life, he was determined not to let it hold him back. I stumbled across the Maguire programme, which is a therapy course. Um, it's changed everything. It, it's really changing your perception that it's OK to st st stutter, but stutter on your own terms. So I'm in control of it now. I'm happy when I show people I've got a stutter just like I've done there because that's being honest and that was the game changer. He believes more needs to be done to raise awareness about the condition. I've had a campaign of stammering awareness for 10 or 12 years um, where I've been trying to make stammering more known in the public eye and to remove negative connotations of the word. You still see things in newspapers like the football team stammered over the line for the win. It's a negative connotation of the word and it really, really annoys me. Um, you wouldn't use any other conditions or disabilities like that. Adam now runs a stuttering support group to help those with what he calls hidden disabilities. And he's been commended with the British Citizen Award for his services to education and his tireless campaigning. For us to see him being recognised for all the hard work he does is brilliant. I think he's an excellent role model for the pupils, but he's also an excellent role model for teachers. Just telling us that you know, even if someone says you can't do something or something will be too hard for you, you can take it on yourself and you can find your own way, your own drive to do it. The awkwardness lies when there's no discussion around it. And that's why stammering awareness is so important because that's a discussion that's happening. And for the British Citizen Awards to recognise that, it's just amazing, I'm really pleased. But I'm delighted not for me, but for stammering awareness. And that's the biggest thing. So for everyone that stammers out there, this is an award for you. He hopes to send the message that having a disability shouldn't stop you following your dreams. Claire McNeil, STV News. Well, let's hear a bit more from Adam, who is with me in the studio tonight. And also here is James Stewart from the Scottish Stammering Network. Good to see you both. Now, Adam, first of all, congratulations on Good. the award. Uh, you must be incredibly proud of what you've achieved. I am, yeah. I mean, I'm absolutely over the moon that the British Citizen Award has recognised this stammering awareness campaign, um, not just for myself, but also for anyone out there who stammers. Um, for me to achieve my dream of becoming a teacher was a proud moment all those years ago when I qualified, and to continue to do it is something I really enjoy. Uh, you've touched on it in the, the piece we saw there. You've, you've come an awful long way, and it hasn't been an easy journey for you. What was some of the most difficult parts of growing up, for example? I found the whole aspect of stammering quite a hard thing to come to terms with because I knew who I wanted to be and my stammer was holding me back. You know, I couldn't approach people to talk to them and if I did, it often didn't go the way that I envisaged it. And that's quite hard when you see yourself as one person but come across as another. So that was tough, you know, going to parties was hard. I would often make up names because it was easier. It was easier than going through the pain and the agony of stammering through my name, chest freezing, blocking, all these things. Um, also, you know, with everything growing up where I grew up, you know, there was a little bit of teasing, all that sort of thing. So it was tough. However, I've got a very thick skin now. It's made me who I am. It's made me proud of who I am. Uh, and James, do you think people understand the impact of living with a stammer and the effect it can have on the individual? I don't think people understand it at all, really, sadly. Um, in the, in the 
in general society to in general society today simply because um, stammering isn't something that's really spoken about a lot. That's why it's good to have uh, campaigns campaigns about it. And the way it can make a person feel, just as Adam's touched on already, uh, someone who has a stammer, being able to say your name can be one of the hardest uh, things. So, I mean, how ridiculous is it that you have to feel that you have to make up another name um, because of the because of the negative uh, reactions which are going to get from people? And that happens all the time. Quite often, some you know someone will say to you, "Oh, it sounds like you've uh, you've uh, forgotten your name there at the start," which is ridiculous. You know, which is is it ridiculous that the Scottish Stammer Network, you know, we have a campaign called uh, Hear the Person, Not the Stammer. And it's about saying, do you know what, a stammer doesn't have to define, a, doesn't have to define you as a, as a person. There's so, much, there's so much more that person's got to offer. And as for the Scottish Stammering Network, what kind of support do they offer? So at the Scottish Stammering Network, we offer a range of support. We have, um, we have at the present three support groups across Scotland. We have a support group in Glasgow, we have one in Edinburgh and we have one in Fife as well. We also have a, we also have a number of open days as well which we run uh, throughout the uh, year and at the Scottish Stammer Network we are um, as we're the only Scotland wide charity which are um, offering practical support like, like that on the ground and we work hand in hand with the NHS as well. And, and Adam, you run a support group for people with so-called hidden disabilities. What kind of things do you do to help? Yeah, well, the therapy option I'm part of is called the Maguire Programme, and it's a therapy programme for people who stammer. So at our groups, we talk about how we've been getting on that month, um, what things we've been doing to push ourselves, get out of our comfort zones. We offer practical ideas, we put that into practice, we use the telephone. So it's just about not holding back and p pushing yourself to speak. And I think that's the key point is, you know, not just talking about it, but doing it. And that's what we try and offer at the Maguire Programme support group. Uh, and what kind of feedback do you get from the people who come along to that group? It's always very positive. It is sometimes the highlight of the month. You know, if they've, it can be an isolating thing, stammering. If you don't know anyone else who stammers, it's also a condition people don't understand unless you've been part of it. So coming along and talking about it in an open, honest, upfront um, way, is really, really important. It's also a good time just to sort of chew the fat a little bit, which is uh, what I find most important, just to talk. Uh, and James, do many Scots live with a condition? Yes, I mean, the figures at present is that one in 100 of the pop one in 100 population have a stammer, and it's more prevalent in children. Um, and it tends to be that once you have a stammer after, once you reach adulthood, you tend to have it for life after. After that, so that's all about trying to trying to control it in life later on, so that it doesn't hold you back, um, and that's why with support groups, it's a real it's a real positive to come along and get to meet other people who have a stammer, and to know that to know that you're not alone because stammer is such a rare condition. To come along to support group and find that although you might be one in one hundred of the population in that in that uh, room, like what we have at the Scottish Stammer Network, um, you're one of the f one of 15 people in that room who have got a stammer and stammer is the norm there so there's a lot of support a lot of peer support from that. And, and where can people go for more information or for help? For more information they can come onto our uh, website at the Scottish Stammer Network, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, um, the local NHS boards as well have information on their websites as well about uh, speech and language uh, therapy which can sometimes be quite hard to access but certainly the Scottish Stammer Network we're happy to put people in touch and uh, to try to give people as much support as possible. And Adam, what would you say to people watching this who are being told you can't or you know you won't? What's your message to them? I think the message I've always tried to convey over the past 12 years of my campaign for stammering awareness is that it's okay to have a quirk, but just embrace it. And when I figured that out, it took me a while, but when I did, it's really let me free. It's really let me go and do what I want to do. So if you have a quirk, embrace it. Well, Adam Black and James Stewart, thank you very much I for did. joining us yes. on the News at 10. Now remember, you can get in touch with us here at STV News. If there's a story you think we should know about,